It's me, Dario, and today we're at the Budweiser Event Center in beautiful Loveland, Colorado. The rumor has that there's been quite a few rare bugs spotted. Won't you come with me? This is Ovo. So here we are at the Budweiser Event Center. I'm joined with the publicist of OVO, Nicholas. Now, can you just give us some information about what you do, how long you've been with the show, simple basic stuff. Uh huh. So I've been with the show for about a bit more than a year. Okay. Uh, when I started on OVO, I was uh, taking care of, I was tour production coordinator. So I was taking care of all the logistics of the tour. Um, flights, buses, trucks. Uh, to make sure that everyone in all of our suitcases travel. We're 100 people on tour uh, with 175 personal suitcases. So that was my job before. Uh, that's what I was taking care of. That's hell of a puzzle. And, uh, and I switched uh, position. Like I started to be publicist a couple of months ago. So now my job is just to make sure that people know uh, that we're in town or when we're in a new town. And we travel in the new market, the new city every week. So I make sure we get in touch with the media in every city where we go. What, what did you modify for the stage from Arena to Big Top other than the obvious? This, the stage is bigger. The wall is bigger as well. Yeah, it and looks, it looks a and it's a bit, bigger. It's a, yeah, it's way bigger. It and curves it's, more. It curves more to make sure everyone has a plan. Uh, as well, in the Big Top version, there was a power track integrated in the in the right. but in the arena version, it's not possible. So mm -hmm. the air track. So the little key. Nothing. It's like like this, and you blow it. Uh, oh yeah, I saw. Oh, yeah. So here we have the other clips, and it's a Brazilian show, so we have a lot of percussion. So we have a, a, a drummer, but as well a percussionist that is amazing, and you see him on stage. Interesting. So Very that's, interesting. that's the ladder for the Russian Cradle Act. So yeah, during the show they don't remove the harness. So the egg is, uh, we have to like... So this is the structure for our end balancing act. Uh, of course during the show there's no, not these tools and boxes. Uh, <laughs> it's called an Orvalo. Um, Orvalo, it's, it's this segment. Orvalo is kind of the... Um, it's got like the a shape. round organic structure, so it's kind of the colony waking up. So here's our event with the table uh, that you'll see at the end of the show. Yeah, so the show is happening in the box colony, which means everything is like green, organic, close to nature. Can you imagine the amount of details here? So there's six, wow. six, six, and then there's probably a few backups on this. I'm assuming. Uh, we have the training ones. Yes. This is the props for this black wire act. And I still don't understand how he does it. <laughs> because, yeah, so you see it. So there, the, the slack wire, as I told before, it's, it's really thin. It's like, it's really, really thin. Maybe a little so, bigger than like a crayon? Or maybe oh, it's like, smaller than that. No, no, no. It's, it's really, I'll show you when he's done with his training. But it's really like... It's thinner than you would think. Yeah. yeah. Like, so there's a light feed during the whole show and during the rehearsal. Um, there, there's a camera at the front of us. And so we see actually what's happening on stage. So we see that we're not missing anything right now. And so the artists are, are usually around these couches watching what's happening on stage to know when they're next nice year. <laughs> now how is that for you traveling in a different city every couple weeks? It's nice. Uh, it has a downside because you're far away from home and uh, we don't have a lot of times in every city where we go. But still, we have, uh, we're usually able to have two days off per week. So and when we're off, 
we're at the hotel, so we don't have any cleaning to do. Uh, we don't have, we can cook because you usually don't have any kitchen. So when we have days off, uh, it really allows us to travel in the city where we are and to discover a new city, usually in a new state, every week. Uh, it's kind of, it's a very great opportunity because there's not a lot of, even there's not a lot of American that will have traveled as in many cities and many states as I we will have done at the end of the year. So that's kind of an amazing opportunity and I feel very, very lucky and grateful for that. Um, so it's nice, we're always traveling, always on, always touring. So actually what we do is that we do 10 weeks tour and that we stop for two weeks and we all go home or travel. So Depending on what you feel like doing. If you exactly. need a home rest or you want to go to the beach. Exactly. Uh, so it's always two weeks on the uh, ten weeks on the road, two weeks off, and we do it, and we've done it for uh, since March 2015, and uh, we tour for at least until uh, the end of September 2017 in the U.S. and Canada, uh, and then we'll the, the show will move to Europe. That is amazing. That is that is just so good to hear. I'm glad the show has got new life back in it. You know, we thought it was going away forever. At one point, they were like, "Ovo's, it's not going away, but it's it's kind of simmering." And then they said, "Oh, Ovo's buzzing with life again." And you know, just to be here to see the stage, to see how it's been reworked. When we load out on Sunday, we take all of the costumes, put them in row cases. We don't have time to watch them on, on Sunday, and. They watch all of them on Tuesday. They fly overnight. Today's premiere, so Amy right here, she's checking all of the costumes, making sure they're uh, show ready. Some of them might need some uh, quick alterations. Not always quick. Not always quick. Yes, some alteration. So you're uh, you're checking all of them right now? Are yes. You? Um, they get holes in the knees. They get holes in the seams. These are the the um, Russian cradle. Oh. With our own washer and dryer, we have to washer and dryer. Of course, none of the costume goes in the dryer, but we or have they all air dry, huh? But like for towels, for like training clothes. So here's the wardrobe workshop. So these are costumes that are not used in the show right now. The thing with the arena show is that they have to pack everything on Sunday and during the last show happening. So. I don't envy that. Yeah, no, it's like setting up a workshop every week and tearing it down. And so we saw Amy earlier uh, working on the costume. We got some, so Amy's from the US, Kara is from South Korea, Catherine's from Montreal, Canada, and Julie's from UK. So, and we hired two locals and they work full time on the costume. And like this rack, I really like to talk about this rack. Okay. It's the short term project. So what needs to be done if we want to have a show this week? So these are, these are all costumes that need to be repaired. Okay, so these costumes are like short term projects and on the road cases over there you have like a long term project. That, they, they need to work on that this week. So uh, these are these costumes priority. Are yeah. So this is the ticket And we have the cricket legs that you've seen. So the crickets when they're uh, just in character, they have their legs that really makes them look like crickets, it's amazing. And when they do their acts, when they do trampling and tumbling, of course they don't have the big cricket legs, so they really take them off. The new one that's our, our foreigner. She's awesome. I love this character. Blue flag. Yeah, blue flag. Blue flag. Oh, blue. Uh, but he has like a lot of uh, hype coming out of his costume and the amount of detail in his costume as well uh, is amazing. Well, that's a cricket shoot, but like a big challenge with all the Cirque du Soleil costumes is that they have to look good on stage, but they have to be comfortable and functional, safe. Yeah, my job is quite easy here. Like to talk about the show and people make sure people talk about it. It's so cool because. I really like this show. I watch it many times every week. Uh, I really like people in the show as well. Uh, really cool team to work with. Um, so it's just nice. I talk about my experience on tour. I travel with it, uh, I, and I talk about it. So it's it's really fun. And as you mentioned, the show was in in Big Top before, and I haven't even seen the Big Top version. I've seen a lot of images, so I can compare. But what I know is that when we get in an arena. 
uh, it's much bigger than the big top. And we have to make sure that people have a good experience if they're there or in the seats higher. So the show, the, the stage is bigger, the wall is bigger as well. And we have now projections in the show. So, and the projections are amazing. They're really good. So it really adds to the show. And also uh, there were acts that we could not do in a big top that we can now do in an arena and vice versa. So we changed a couple of stuff uh, in the show. For example, this act that they're setting up right now, it's the Russian Fiddle Act. Um, it was not in the, in the uh, big top version. And it's now in the arena version. Um, that's a new ad in the show. The training you just saw a bit before, the aerial strap was not in the in the big dog version either. It was a trapeze act, if I remember. Okay. That. And they replace it with this aerial strap act that takes more space in this arena. So even if you've seen the show before, come back and see it again. It's it's not brand new, but it's got a whole new life to it. Yeah, of course you'll recognize the theme. The music is the same. The music. Uh, they, they rework some things. There's some new music, uh, but you'll recognize the costume, recognize, recognize the theme, the, uh, the story, the characters, but it's a new version of Hobo. My name is Camille Santer. I'm uh, originally from Montreal in Canada and I'm a flyer for the Cradle Act. I'm Nancy Damianova. I'm as well from Montreal. Uh, I'm 25 and I'm doing the exact same things on the Cradle, uh, Cradle Act. So we both did gymnastics uh, from club together and then we went to college. Yeah, yeah NCAA. Mm -hmm. uh, got a full ride scholarship to diff yeah. two different schools and after graduation we ended up here in Zurich. Did you ever think that you would end up at the circus? Uh, not really, not until like three years ago. <laughs> but no, I didn't think so. Uh, for me, it was I've always been uh, really interested in Cirque. I wasn't sure when I would join, uh, when would be the right moment for me. So uh, I mean, I'm, like anything else, it, it was it, kind of like a dream or a goal, but I didn't know if I would actually end up in Cirque. How did you end up in, in the circus? I finished college and I was like, ah, I'm not sure what I want to do. And one of my coach was actually in circus and she always told me how amazing the experience was. So I was like, all right, let, let me try, you know, we'll give it a shot. And I ended up here, so yeah. My story is a bit different. So I graduated from University of Utah in 2015. And from there, because I'm an international student, I was allowed to get a US visa to work in the States for one year within my of uh, uh, what I graduate, graduated in and then Cirque eventually just contacted me uh, saying that they had something that could fit my match but uh, that I need to try out so I hadn't even uh, I hadn't applied yet for Cirque and they contacted me, contacted me and I was just I had to give it a shot because that was so, always something I wanted to try out. So, yeah. What's that feeling like? Because you come from a gymnastic background, and I'm sure you did like competition, but now you're really not competing against anyone, and you're out there with an audience. Mm -hmm. How does that? How does that feel? I think it's better. Um, I did enjoy competing, but it was more for yourself. This one is more for people's enjoyment, and like I like to hear what they think of our act, and it just gives you more. Um, I don't know. I enjoy it more. For sure, it just gives you more power to keep going. <laughs> well, I find that there's a, a lot of similarities and also differences. I was always with gymnastics. Uh, I was kind of used to big crowds uh, competing, and so the crowd never affected me. I, I actually love performing in front of people because it gives me energy. Um, but I would say that you still have the jitters and uh, the butterflies before going in on stage, especially when you do something new, which is the same thing as we used to feel in gymnastics. So it's just it's just not the exact same because you don't get scored. You know, people will enjoy the show no matter what, so that's fun. <laughs> and speaking of jitters, um, explain your act because you do a crazy act, right? <laughs> Well, it depends. Um, for me, I try to keep it light. If we do, like she said, something yeah. new, um, I try to sometimes look at her. I'm like, okay, everything's okay, you know. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think we just need to really focus on what we're doing. But 
either done. It's, it's really fun. Oh, we train so much. It's that's another mm -hmm. similarity with gymnastics. You train so much before you get to perform what you're gonna perform. So by the time that you're there, it's it's you know you, you, a coach won't put you in, won't make you do something that you're not ready for. So it's just the normal, the, the first time going on stage with something new. You're a little, you know, because you haven't done it in front of people, so you get a little yeah. bit nervous. But like she said, uh, we try to have fun because we know each other for a long time. So we try to keep the mood light, and our coach and our guys are really consistent. So we have a good uh, trust founding with our team. What's your favorite part of the show? My favorite part, I actually don't do it, but it's the cocoon act. I think it's one of the most poetic moments of the show, and then it becomes a butterfly. I like my act. I like flying. I like paddling. <laughs> so to be honest, if if I wasn't doing my act, I probably would be a little bored waiting around. Oh, yeah. So it gives me it gives me the energy and. I would say it's a beautiful act, but as, as she said, the cocoon and butterfly moment is really beautiful. And I also like web the contortion act. It's really cool and I don't know, it's the music and everything in the costumes is just a really cool mix. I think people will find different things that they would like in the show. Well, is there anything you want to say personally to the fans at Circast? Well, come and see us. Um, it's, it's Seriously, it's a great show. Uh, we're 100 people on tour working super hard to make this show happen every week in a new city. Uh, and also something that is very cool that I really like uh, about OVO is like OVO is a Bucks community living all together. And when you spend time on tour and when you just come like this to, to visit the show and visit backstage, you realize as well that it's kind of a, it's just, we're kind of a little Bucks community backstage working all together. And we have our different bugs in the show doing different acts. But that's kind of the same backstage. Like we have kind of we are we have our technicians, our physio, our artistic director, our stage manager. Everyone has their task and make this colony alive. So for that it's really cool to work on on over. I'm super excited to see the show tonight. And we appreciate everything you guys do. We understand how much hard work it is. I mean this isn't you're you're moving a village every couple of weeks, yeah, exactly. you know, and yeah. it's it's just thank you so much for you're your welcome. time, Thanks for and coming. thank you for get, bringing us, thank you for bringing Denver so many Cirque shows. Yeah, there's we, a lot. We in get a lot here in Denver, yeah. so we appreciate that, and for your time once again, thank you. Acontecer